Jambo, and welcome to another Global Storm Outlook. Well, things are really brewing up in the Indian Ocean with a tropical cyclone and others developing. And we're going to look at some of these, so let's get right on to it. This is the last 20 hours of infrared imagery for the Indian Ocean and you can see there is a developing storm over here and this is actually now a tropical storm and that was the one we were looking at in the last Global Storm Outlook uh, three, four days ago or so and so that has come together and that is really a concern right now and we have another system over here uh, a sort of a smaller disturbance here and stuff going on over here we'll look at in a minute. So zooming in and looking at the Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast, we've got the storm over here and I think it's hasn't been given a name yet, <clears throat> but we'll look at the naming in a second. And the countries that are potentially in the path, well the main is Mozambique again, and up here we have Tanzania, and down here is Madagascar, looking like it's going to miss Madagascar. And then we've got the Comoros Islands. The JTWC forecast indicates that the storm will intensify to become a hurricane before passing north of the Comoros Islands and then making landfall in far northern Mozambique as a potential Category 1 hurricane strength system. With Mozambique landfall forecast for the 26th of April. Sea surface temperatures ahead of the storm are around 29 to 30 Celsius, which is very nice and warm for intensification of the storm. These sea surface temperatures are above normal throughout most of this region by about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. In terms of naming, if we run down the list, we go past Idai and Joaninha, and we get to the Seychelles option, Kenneth looks like that will be the name. Let's take a look at the European Center model, and I'm going to put a little observation point to see the winds on the northern tip of this island of the Comoros. And let's now go forward, and as the storm approaches on Wednesday, and intensifies a little, but not a huge amount, but it's gradually intensifying. And then the winds pick up tropical storm force at 35 knots, and then it uh, intensifies a little further, stabilizes, making landfall in Mozambique. To compare, here is the global forecasting system model, and you see the storm moving and passing north of the Comoros. That is its deepest point at 942 millibars, then it becomes a little weaker just prior to landfall. But here's the thing, it does stall at the land, and this is a extended period of very, very heavy rainfall that is forecast by the GFS over northern Mozambique. So once again, we've got a stalling tropical cyclone at the coast, according to the GFS. This is a very, very uh, significant concern for flooding in this region. Quickly returning to the European Center model, we'll see that it actually does stall as well at the coast and actually almost goes up and down the coast. So it just arrives at the coast and then stops according to both these models. So it is definitely worth looking at the accumulated rainfall which is shown here and as the storm approaches the values go up along the path forming a line of orange. At the coast the storm stops and it's essentially going off the top of the scale which is at 500 millimeters or 50 centimeters that's half a meter of rainfall and the whole region of northern Mozambique according to the GFS it gets into these very high values and bear in mind this is the similar region that was impacted by the first stage of cyclone Idai before cyclone Idai formed. The very heavy rains begin on the 25th of April and continue for the next five days according to the GFS. Now if this track were to go slightly to the north then it would start moving into Tanzania and bring the flooding rains into southern Tanzania. So all depending on the track and the length of time. Most of the models keep this storm at a Category 1, reaching Category 1 hurricane st status. However, the hurricane wharf shown here intensifies the storm to become a major hurricane. And that's indicated here. There is the hurricane wharf 
the only one making it a major hurricane. The rest are all at the category one or just in the category two. Let's move back to the broad view. So over here is that storm, which I presume will be called Kenneth. And then we have another developing storm over in the eastern Indian Ocean or central eastern Indian Ocean, central eastern southern Indian Ocean. That one, if it develops, I think will be called Lorna. Anyway, that one goes and heads off into essentially nowhere of particular interest. There's a secondary system on its side that comes in and merges with it. It looks like it does intensify to hurricanes and possibly major hurricane strength, but it doesn't go anywhere that is habited by humans. So we've already got potentially, most likely, well we've got one tropical cyclone for sure, most likely we're going to have a second one pretty soon over here, and we've got this smaller disturbance, Maybe perhaps that won't become a tropical cyclone, I'm not sure. Can we find another one? Well, uh, spoiler. Certainly in the forecast, uh, we can indeed find another one because later on this disturbance moves up and this is all associated with a, a westerly wind burst of sorts around the equatorial region, spinning up another cyclone on in the northern hemisphere, this one heading into the Bay of Bengal and heading up and stalling, intensifying and moving into Myanmar in this forecast, way out in the forecast extremely uncertain. However, any tropical cyclone that is in the Bay of Bengal is of extreme concern. This is where the highest death tolls have occurred with tropical cyclones. Comparing with the long-range European Centre model, it also has a small tropical cyclone developing in the far south Bay of Bengal, and that one moves into southern India. So the you can see how different the two models are. Um, but they're both indicating a tropical cyclone, which is interesting. We'll have to definitely come back and check on that in a few days from now. In Europe, the large storm system that brought flooding rains to Spain has now headed into the Mediterranean. This is actually a satellite image from yesterday, and the rains are heading into Italy as it appeared they were going to do in the previous outlook. And we can also see all of this dust getting wrapped up and moving into southern France and into Italy later. A lot of Saharan dust coming off the continent in this strong southerly flow. This is the European view and look at all of that rain over northern Italy. That is pretty miserable for them, and there's some snow in the Alps, surprisingly cold over Spain, even some snow indicated there, and the cold weather continues as this blast comes down from the north and moves in. There's snow, heavy snow in the Alps, cold conditions, and even later on in the forecast, snow in North England and into Scotland, if you believe that. the USA right now there are some severe thunderstorms moving into Oklahoma. For tomorrow the severe thunderstorm potential shifts to southwest Texas by the looks of things and the main threat being large hail and severe gusts and there is adequate shear for the organization and the production of supercellular rotation, rotationing, rotating thunderstorms. And this is what it looks like in the GFS for tomorrow. And this is tomorrow afternoon into the evening, and you see the uh, thunderstorms being picked up by the GFS as heavy rain regions in southwest Texas blowing up and then continuing and progressing as we move into Wednesday and moving across the southern United States. <laughs> Taking a look at South America, it looks like things have calmed down a bit in Argentina. It makes a change. Um, it does look like there's a bunch of thunderstorms in Bolivia, 
and the usual assortment of spicks and spots around the Amazon basin. We can see all that heavy rain in Bolivia at the beginning of the GFS forecast here. Doesn't look like that rain in Bolivia persists for too long, which is good, uh, as you don't want to have to see some flooding up there. Um, and then there is a bit of heavy rain moving into Uruguay. That looks at things on Saturday. As evening sets in over Japan, you can see a big plume of dust and pollution coming off uh, Asia and moving over northern Japan. That dust and pollution is ahead of a weather system that's bringing heavy rain into South Korea and into southern Japan. So we're going to have a quick look at that. That was associated with the same area of heavy rain that brought all the rain to southern China that we saw in the previous outlook. The rain doesn't look too serious um, as it trundles through and across Japan, across Honshu and into Hokkaido, where I am, by Thursday, uh, Wednesday night. And the interesting thing is it suddenly cools down and we've got possible snow, although I think that's still rain in Sapporo. But anyway, some snow for some regions of Hokkaido towards the end of the week. And checking in on Australia this evening as sun sets over the red interior. We've got rain, or some rain, and cloud over western Queensland, central Queensland, southwestern Queensland, and northwestern New South Wales. And if you look very carefully, you'll see, best on other satellite imagery, ah, I'll show you that, Lake Eyre is filling with water. Go to NASA Worldview and you'll see for yourself, this is a look at Lake Eyre and the water you can see flowing in. And that is from the Queensland rains as well as probably a bit from Tropical Cyclone Trevor pouring into the interior, finally getting into there. So it looks like Lake Eyre is continuing to, to fill bit by bit. And that's it for me. Um, catch you in the next one. <laughs>